Greetings from the past before the time travels and welcome back to another episode of The Ladder. My name is Ty and we're listening to Johan. But this shall be my kitchen and I shall fix it according to my wishes. Yeah? Kind of weird. Anyone would think that pots and knives are supposed to go anywhere but the kitchen, huh? I assume he's gotten them confused. It wouldn't be the first time. Confused? How does that even work? I understand covers, carpets, or even curtains getting mixed up. Hey, I'd even understand pots being mixed up with silver decor. Did he mix them up with some other knives? Possible. But knives? Is he a ki Is Luke really a killer? Is he behind all of this? Oh, he has a collection of ornamental ones from his fa father. It takes them everywhere he goes, wherever he moves. I guess mm. that makes sense. Uh, still odd. Does he need to sacrifice a woman? Oh, I'm so intrigued right now. He merely shrugs before going back to work. The movers work efficiently even when they're left alone, and they do quick work of their responsibilities. The head foreman comes, standing in the doorway to consult me on this or that, and I have to go help out every now and then. But they pretty much have everything up to standards. They skip lunch entirely, not even realizing when to do so. Nevertheless, all is well as the butlers gets to heating up the leftovers bubble and squeak from breakfast and makes a generous batch of fish and chips for them. Most likely simple in comparison to what he serves to the rights, but well done nonetheless. That smells good. Want to wrap up some for me to go? It's an idle observation more than anything. My thoughts, as they are, preoccupy me. If there are any left, one can't go wrong with fish and chips. Everyone loves them. Even my husband. And he's American. I really do hate getting up close and personal with my clients. It's a distraction. It is obvious to me that I've gotten my priorities all wrong when I can't help, but I think about what I hear heard, what I learned about the rights couple. These things have a way of creeping up on a person. Thoughts, ideas, whether they are fact or fiction. They creep up and fester, crawl and riff in a way that with twists. I hear jiggling, delighted and mocking. They creep up and... The sensation of fingers ghosting briefly on my arm causes me to freeze and hiss. Don't! I half expect her to be there. Whoa, no need to scream bloody murder! <laughs> it's just me. Quiet down before you break glass. But it's just whiskey. Don't do that again. Ever. I don't like being scared, though I don't believe in the likes of spooks being strawless is not on top of the list of things Marin liked. Lucky for him, I have nothing within reach or he would have gotten on friendly terms with something like a rolling pin. What was with that reaction? Were you really scared? Has Johans been telling you ghost stories? He just loves to scare people. Isn't that right, brother Gurium? The butler's expression is unreadable. I hardly see any emotion on his face to begin with since I started working for the rights aside from vague amusement. There must have been something there though, judging from Mr. Wright's own content look. The expression on Mr. Wright's face is almost cruel. But neither of them spoke, even as Johans leaves the room to serve the workers the late lunch. There's something going on with this. So, too. now that we're alone, Marianne, what are you so jumpy for? I was just thinking about all the urban legends the movers have been telling me about this place. Don't tell me you believe in that tosh. They're nothing but tales made up to scare children. Timmy, Billy, don't you dare go up to that big mansion and get in trouble there. The ghosts are going to get you. That's a boring way to look at it, but that's usually what it is anyway, no? Like I said, I was just thinking. It would be a relief, actually, if those rumors of this place being haunted is true. That just means I'm not going bonkers. Hearing, let alone seeing a dead person isn't exactly the symptoms of a healthy mind. Sure, it means there would be such things such as ghouls and goblins, but at least I'd be sane. On the other hand, there would actually be a dead girl walking around. If you could excuse the inane question, Mr. Wright, you haven't noticed anything weird here? A simple enough question on the surface, yet I noticed the man stiffen as the question leaves my mouth. I wouldn't have noticed it if I wasn't watching his reaction intently, but in his eyes I see something dangerous. That depends on your definition of the word weird. 
Are we still on the topic of this place being haunted? Because no, things have not started to fly around and we have yet to require an exorcism. I don't think my head would like to do the whole 180 degree turn thing. Well, maybe that, but no strange people? Aside from my usually weird butler and all the weird men traipsing around touching my things? No, not really. Why do you ask? Have you noticed anyone strange while you were here? Because you must report it to Johans and he'll have security handle it. Sure, but these sure. reports better not be about ghosts and things that go bump in the night. I don't want to waste manpower on the boogeyman or senseless witch hunts. <laughs> it's me, the boogeyman. I'll keep that in mind, Mr. Wright. But no, it's nothing like that. I guess the mansion is just strange for me. It's a unique project. No strange men or women lurking about then? A dead teenager would technically qualify as strange. But, yeah, the whole I see dead people thing isn't going to go over well. Not that I know of, but I'll inform your hands immediately if something comes up. I'm serious, Mint. You see anything, anyone suspicious, and you report it. Immediately. I think that goes without saying. The concern you have on the talk of security is quickly gone. His arrogant smug smirk returns, if a bit subdued. Whatever's more me remark or innuendo he has at that re ready never comes though. As voice from the dining hall ring out. So is this a full time job for you then? Nah, I just freelance mostly. Uh, for magazines, newspapers and events. So you can't really call it a full time job. It's Sack. fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least not all the time. That would be the magazine photograph I presume. As always, Mrs. Wright talks in such a kind and cheery fashion, no matter who she's talking with. It certainly puts people at ease around her. It sounds like it's working on the photograph too. Hearing them, though, seems to put Mr. Wright in a sour mood. At least, if a small skull is anything to go by. Is he... jealous? Ask if he's alright to lighten the mood. Hey, are you all right there, Whiskey? You're looking like you need a serious drink. Okay. Is it that you want to do then? Film. Documentaries mostly. But cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on the thing, actually. I'm fine. Just a bit winded from all that moving about. It's been a long day. And the day's not over yet. So if you can excuse the bloodness, you either shape up to help or ship out back to your room and let us do the rest of the work. He hesitates, eyes locked firmly on the door that led to the dining hall. Even now, we can still hear as Mrs. Wright and the photographer chit-chat in between shots. It's not my place to say this, but she really does seem to care a lot about you, you know? There's no need to remind me of that. A strange smile appears in his face before he shuts his eyes and sighs. Tell the workers that you're all dismissed early. That's nice and all, whiskey. But we really shouldn't just take off. Delays aren't a good thing when it comes to big projects like these. The sooner we tackle certain issues, the better. And I trust you can take care of these issues another day. Don't make me ask again, Mint. Hmm. Just tell the others they can go home early. And to not worry, they'll still get paid the remaining hours. I don't know what prompted it is. With the air he's putting on, though, I know better than to meddle and prod further. Besides... Fine. You're the boss. Walking out of the kitchen, I just accept the fact that whatever he says will go well under his roof. Mrs. Wright and the photographer are still far too busy in conversation to notice me, even as I make my way through the dining hall. Besides, I didn't want to ruin their fun. Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Fancy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibi a lot more. Going to the foyer, has me stumble upon the family butler once more, who raises a brow at my presence. And where are you off to in a hurry, Miss McCulloch? The foreman is looking for you. The Bratwurst wants us off the clock. He's dismissing us early because of... Oh, I don't know. He just wants us out... I'll go and call a cab for you then. It would be for the best that you leave when he asks you to. I don't doubt it. Channel update, woo! -hoo. So tell me... Oh, October the 26th. Is that a head of a... That's why he made a drink. To keep her mind off things that haunted her, Mary and McCullough focus on, an assi on assisting the rights during their movement. 
Later that afternoon she was seen chatting with Luke Wright, who then demanded she and the rest of her crew take an early leave. Mm -hmm. Then this happened and we know what happened next, right? Well, my ride back to the city doesn't take too long to get there. Granted, there were some difficulties at first, because the driver didn't know where the Armingard mansion is. He tried to have us hand over GPS coordinates from our smartphones or some other techno babble I didn't care about and the butler didn't understand. But as soon as we told him it's the haunted mansions over in a Salem Aslam village, he knew just the place. And finally headed over, albeit with some hesitation. All the way back to the city, the driver keeps complaining about the place giving him the willies. It give me willies too. I would have loved to snap him. But as soon as the thought occurs to me, another blossom in the forefront of my mind. One that has somewhat bothered me greatly, more than my expiration over whiskey and this project or wanting all of it to stop. There has been no Lorraine whispering over my ears today. Worse. Worse, I find myself searching for it. Searching for her. Damn no will it be what? Loose ends. Fucking bloody loose ends everywhere. I thought I've already moved past this years ago. And it does nothing to help me curb my frustration. If anything, it only ensures that I want a stiff drink. And where else do I go to drink? Tuesdays are for karaoke and Wednesdays? Improv. Usually, it's just four guys who did hilarious games. The one with Irish drinking songs are always a crowd favorite. Though I love a good laugh, stand-up comedy isn't my thing. And without Cam or Haruna, or any other distractions, I end up drinking a lot more this time. And when there's several bottles of beer in me, I get really, really embarrassed. Hey! G! Psst! G! Come over here! G. I need you for something! It's a good thing that the bartender is a nice fellow. I probably have been kicked out of here of other places by now, or worse. If push comes to shove, all he would do is give me an easy smile and a shake of his head even when he's attending to other customers. Just like now. Give me a moment, will ya? I gotta go check on her. He's some Asian guy. And I'm pretty sure I've seen him here before a couple of times, although he never talks to anyone else except G. The girls used to be all over him too, but he always turned them away. I'll be here. You go do that before she falls over. <laughs> Ashton. All right, all right. What is it? Do you need someone to help you get home? Bartender, pour the wine. Uh, I think that's enough alcohol for you, little missy. I'm cutting you off. Mm. <laughs> A wine comes from the back of my throat as he pulls my bottle away. I have no hope of getting them back once they are behind the counter. Even in my drunk mind, I don't dare hop over it for them. Because what little sense I have left knows I'd sooner take a floor dive than succeed wrestling a bottle from a sober man. But that doesn't stop me from trying to reach out with my arms like a stupid idiot anyway. He smiles and shakes his head, just like I know he would, before going back to the other guy. Right now, where were we? Are you holding up, boy? With no drink and no one to really chat with, I would have gone home or gone to sleep on the bar right there and then. But I'm not ready to stand up and try to trek back home just yet. Same old, same old. I'm still on the Luxborn firm case. Those blokes they talk about being in dark suits, whisking people into the night or some shit and all that. Didn't the media call it some ridiculous name in the morning news? What is it this time? Wait, don't answer that. They've called it a lot of things. As long as people don't start running around claiming they're the Illuminati. So, what have you got for me this time, G? Anything good? Slow down there. You haven't even told me what sort of deal in Dosh we got. Who are you looking into this time? Their talk would have interested me, would have kept my attention if I gave a damn. But in my current state, I can barely give two fucks about the things going on around me. All these words are just buzzing, barely surfacing from the sea of sounds that is in the pub. And it would have stayed that way, perhaps even drowned if I didn't hear his name. Luke Wright. You know the guy, and don't pretend like you don't, G. It takes a special kind of ignorant not to know who he is. That smug blonde who likes throwing around his money. He was just here a few days ago, as a matter of fact. Great tipper, if you think him just dumping a water cash on the counter after having too much whiskey, Kansas tipping. Why are you asking? He did it. You have no idea, G. He's probably the worst sort you can imagine. 
Luke fucking right. Fucking whiskey. Even without him around, I'm still hearing about the guy. What the absolute fuck. Despite this, I find myself getting up and sauntering over to join them before I pipe up. Is this smart talk about Luke fucking right I'm hearing, eh? Private conversation here, lady. There's only amusement on G's face. The Asian guy, he starts to look ticked off as hell. Don't worry, Holmes. She's clean. And she might be able to help you with your... Uh, predicament. Of course. A drunk's just stumbled through here with what I need. Get real, G. No offense, lady, but you're smashed. I know, right? Nothing beats being drunk after a hard day's work. Especially when you're working for Mr. Luke Wright. So, she works for the guy? Doesn't that make her... I don't know, suspect. Say you have a little faith in me, why don't ya? I don't have much and you might as well have something to go off. You're the one who was so desperate to come run into me for business. Yoo-hoo, still right here, fellas. Five feet eleven, can't miss me. <laughs> I'm like Shorty over here. What's with that mad look? You want to dance, boy? You don't look like you can bust a groove. Maybe a leg, but with that fancy coat of yours. To add insult to injury, I move directly behind him and use the top of his head as an armrest. But when he shakes me off, I pull up into my seat right next to him. Don't try me. You Oops. can hardly stay on your feet. We don't want to ruin your fancy coat, do we? Ah, oh, children, the both of you. But you're still standing after all that, are ya? Matt, you see this giantess? She's a legendary regular here. Been drinking like there's no tomorrow. I'm a bit jealous. Can't do that anymore or my liver will give out on me. Good with the mic, too. Don't see you much recently, but I guess you're always busy, aren't you? You're some fancy designer or something, if I remember correctly. Wait, I know you. You were at the open house for the mansion. Yeah, that's right. Marianne! My pink color! Oh, <laughs> I'm a famous interior designer extraordinaire. Ooh, that rhyme. <laughs> anyway, you guys were talking about that weenie Luke Wright, right? Or something. Can't really talk about it. I don't even know if I can trust you. Even if G said you're clean. But anything would be of help. Well, I don't gossip about my clients, if that's all there is to this. <laughs> you wanted to gossip about him a few minutes ago, Marianne. And that was the beer talking. Not Marianne. You won't mind if we ask the beer a few questions then? Maybe. Depends on who's asking and what they're asking. But seriously, that guy is absolutely frustrating. One moment, he's an absolute dickhead. And then he's acting like an actual decent human being the next. I just can't figure him out. I can't imagine how that pretty wife of his can put up with him. If I were her, I'd dump his flat arse straight up. And I'm not just saying that because I think Hannah's pretty or anything. Luke is a catch too. They both are. I don't think so. But I really cannot, for the love of all things holy, see how they even work out together. So, Luke Wright, have you noticed anything strange about him while you were working with him? Anything peculiar? Of note? You're the one being peck peachy right about now, Holmes. But nah, nothing that comes to mind off the top of my head. He's just like most rich, smarmy arseholes and then some. A jiggle bubbles up and I press my cheek against the cool countertop with my eyes shut tight just because. Eventually cracking one eye open just in case they thought I fell asleep. I grin at Holmes. So, Holmes, I'm guessing you're some private detective or something. Is Fine. it Hannah? Did she pay you to look if he's been cheating or some such? Hannah's the wife, right? What about her? How is she? How is she or how is she? Well and good. Definitely the nicer of the two and sexy as sin to boot. Not a private detective then. Are you from one of them tabloids wanting to know if the Luke Roy doesn't know how to put his pants on right? Mmm, pants. I take the pants off. Ah, uh, here we go. Slipping, slipping. I haven't been this drunk in such a long time. It's a miracle I've been coherent for as long as I've been here right now. I'm asking you if you've noticed any odd behavior from her. Odd behave? You what? I wonder how she'd be drunk. 
I can just imagine her like the giggly sort. What do you think? These are serious questions, Marianne. Lives might just be at stake here. What do you expect? She's smashed. Why am I even doing this? This is getting me nowhere, G. She's not a reliable source. The chief, let alone the courts, aren't going to take the word of a drunk. This will be dismissed, and I might be in trouble if they try to argue that I coerced a testimony out of her. This is a fucking train wreck. You're a fucking train wreck now, if you ask me. Maybe it's about time you apply the brakes and stop for a bit. The wave of despair that comes over the both of them is palpable. If feelings had a taste, it would be bitterer than the beer I'm full of. And it gets me thinking. Though thinking doesn't get me far with too much shite in my system. You know that's not an option. Thanks for being patient, McCullough. Good luck with your work on that mansion. Speaking of that mansion, there's something going on in that place. Something, something. As ach day! No wonder Mr. Wright likes it so much. It's as fishy as he is. Rotten bloke. Maybe that Santos girl is really onto something, eh? Suspicious shite, I'm telling you. Explains why she's so reluctant. What do you mean that Santos girl is onto something? Before I get another world out, there's hands on my shoulders and everything starts to spin. I quickly slap his hands away the best I can and send him the false look I can muster. Take your hands off me, pipsqueak! I'm not a lady who's shaken or stirred unless you want me up chucking on your pretty hair! Wow. <laughs> Well guys, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe to my channel. If you're already subscribed, click on the notification bell down below so you get notified when I upload my videos. Share us on all your social media. And guys, we'll see you in the future or back in the ladder. High five! Recording session done.